And uh, today we're going to talk about knife some sharpening, what? right? Knife sharpening. We're not talking about knife juggling, but knife, knife sharpening. <laughs> now, 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 you know, Brian, I remember when we first started talking about it. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of folks think that this beautiful tool that, you know, a smaller version, you know what they say about the size of a man is tool. But, you just uh, say that this is not mine. That's <laughs> this is mine, and that's Brian. <laughs> so it is not awesome. mine. But but most folks, you know, no. they get those little knife kits, and somebody sure, gives it to them as a as a wedding gift. You get the block, and the it has block. one of these things in it's it. It's got all these yeah. little teeny little wimpy 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 things. We actually call this a what? A honing. The honing Owner. thing. A honer. No. In the professional world, we actually refer to this as a, a sharp steel. steel. Now, a couple of things that folks don't know is, is that they think that when they have their knife, they put their knife on this thing, and it does not sharpen. We actually call it a honing steel, right. and we'll talk about the difference in a second between honing and actual sharpening. But one of the things that you also need to know is all steels, or even if you got one with that little you know, cheap knife set, that first one they got you, should always have several things you need to look for. Number one, good weight. Okay, because later on, as we this start like, doing some cooking, we'll show you how we even use this as a cooking instrument and also use it to impale small children and okay. And um, intruders in intruders, the kitchen. Exactly. You don't need the chef's knife. You don't need that, steel. just a good steel. But also, it should have this point, and later on, we show this how to does. properly use this. It always needs to have a point. Does that one have a nice it, little it point? It does have a point. And yeah. here goes the most important thing that you did or did not know all steels are magnetized. I did not know they were magnetized. All good steels are magnetized. And we're going to talk about that. And why is that? Okay, now here we go. We're going Let's to talk about that. it. Number one, we said this thing, even though it's good for impaling, skewering, everything thrust. else, is not good for sharpening. Sharpening right. implies that we are actually removing metal. Right. And we're going to talk about this. Back in the old times, I'm going to say old times, <laughs> like uh, yesterday. <laughs> Weeks ago. The way that we actually sharpen a knife, when your knives got dull, you'd either have to send them out to somebody. You know, right. you used to have the person who came around with a cart. They would take get a people's wet, knives. Well, that was way back when. You said, but when they you had a wet. Kid. You were about to say they had a wet something. A whetstone. A That's whetstone. What I used when I was in Boy Scouts, we'd get our whetstone. Exactly. Now, 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 now yeah. what most folks don't understand, whetstone, not wet. Wet. W h e t. Wet means to sharpen or to hone. But you would actually take this. That's what this is. What we have here are, are a series of whetstones. First, we have a coarse one, and we would come. And now this, we're not putting much pressure. So, so this is you're not putting a lot of pressure on there, but it's it's grinding away. It's the grinding edge, away. Right? It's, it's actually a new stripping edge. down right. metal. It's creating a new edge. Right. Once you have created a new edge, and here we call this a tristone because it's got how many sides do you think? Four, oh, three. <laughs> try, right, four sides. Three so sides. Try and guess. So we go, try, like, try try, and guess. Yeah. So we go from a coarse side to a medium, finally down to our fine edge to get a fine edge. Once we have sharpened, and sharpening is something that you only do no more than four times a year. You yeah. were telling me before you sharpen your knives, how often? Maybe a couple times a year. Maybe a couple times a year. But in between, yeah. and right after you sharpen, this is when you use your steel. Right. The steel is yeah. for honing. Now, I, I wish you could get a close-up. Let's see how close you can get. Let's see if you can get microscopic. If you could get that close, <laughs> you'll start to see that what the steel does, first, once we sharpen, uh, once we put it on our stone, we have a bunch of burrs, a bunch of loose metal. Yeah, it's all serrated. It's right? all serrated. It's but, but, but even before that, when we sharpen, it actually strips away metal. Now, right. we can't see it, but there's little flakes. That's why this needs to be uh, magnetized. Uh, Aha. Uh -huh. As we run it along, it removes those little bits. So those bits aren't falling on your floor, they're sticking to this. And actually, usually when you, you know, you figure, you, a lot of times if you wipe off your steel, you're like, all I did was took it off the block, how could it be dirty? Yeah. Well, it's not dirty, it's, those are actually pieces of metal that are coming off. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. And caught them. So now, in between <laughs> sharpenings, now most folks aren't good with a stone or a wet stone. You were in the Boy Scouts. Right. I've been a professional chef. I can barely sharpen my thing with this, but I have some cats who, all different types of methods. Some yeah. have some have the massage method. Yep. Uh, yeah, I've done that you've one. You've seen the massage method. Yeah. You know, some have, some have their little French method. You know, they just come back and forth. You know, yeah. they're talking, they go back and forth. Yeah. You know what? The greatest tool that was ever invented that I found out <laughs> is this sucker <laughs> right here. I love that thing. <laughs> this little handy dandy gadget. I remember when I first it, saw it, it what, we actually yeah. got you one. Yeah. Don't you love it? Oh, I what love do you it. love about it? It's easy, it's protective, and it, and it creates the exact angle of the knife that you need right exactly there. The, perfect. the perfect angle that you need to keep your knife at 
to get a perfect edge is right here. Plus we have a stone in here. Plus this thing right here is about $400. Right. This runs about nine bucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, like, like a goldfish. Once it's finally done, you throw it away. Right. You, know, you don't take and, it to the and, back. And you don't need to sharpen that often, so it's going to last forever anyway. It's going to last forever. And the way this works, you know, I've seen some of my guys try and do a couple of different things. They don't trust the design. Notice that this has a nice knuckle grip or a handle grip right here yeah. to prevent you from cutting your hand. I've seen folks when they finally get one of these try and hold it down and run the knife. No! Oh, geez. No. This is designed <laughs> that you lay the knife down, take your hand, and you come, oh, and you just pull it, drag it right along the edge, and it strips off metal. You only need to do about three or four passes. Mm -hmm. Then, but you're pressing down a lot, right? We're pressing down yeah. a lot, so because we're actually stripping off metal. Right. Sharpening, we are removing metal, like you said, giving it a brand new edge. Honing, or truing the edge, and that's what you were talking about before you said, right. you know, if you get microscopic, okay, you can say it would look serrated, you yeah. know, it would look imperfection. And the way, the, another term for what we're doing with the steel is truing, or calling truing the edge, or straightening out the edge. That's what this does. Sharpen only no more than four times a year. Right. Hone every time, every time you pull out your knife. Now, I was saying before, it's important to look for a steel that's got a good tip. Okay. Notice, the correct way, or what we call the training wheel method of honing, <laughs> is to actually, see look, it's not moving, I'm trying to slide it won't. is to actually teach folks to come down like this. Okay. For folks who are afraid of cutting themselves, now I'm going to slow it down. We're trying to maintain an angle of between 20 and 22 degrees. You know, you don't have to get out Would your that be 21? 21 will work. <laughs> that's legal. 21 that's is legal. Between 20 and 21 22. is legal. All right. That's correct. 20, not legal. Okay, 21 legal. <laughs> Still get caught. That's what I say. Don't say 18. Okay, here we go. So we keep our angle and we come down. And notice we're going from the heel. The so you're all the way, and you're using the entire I'm length the of the entire steel length of the along steel. the entire length of the entire blade. Length. Okay. You'll see some folks do like this. That's okay as well. So long as you're getting, like you said, the entire length and you're From keeping your the angle. tip. Okay. Once you gain up your, your confidence, okay, a steel is designed is another key feature that we need. Okay, you'll see, especially European chefs. I understand. They actually, that. don't they actually <laughs> like, I can't even do it. They actually like to come toward themselves. That's what I do. Exactly. So, an important feature is this right here. Our knuckle guard, right. okay? Otherwise, you end up with scars you along know, here and Especially here. since everyone knows that chefs <laughs> like to drink what they cook with. You know, that's one cup, one for the food. And we're not talking shop. about stock. You know, no. pretty soon, <laughs> you'd have no fingers. So it's important to have a really good right. knuckle guard. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if our little butcher block one has a nice little knuckle guard. It has a, it has a little bit. No it's not necessarily. Guard. But no whippy one. again, you're going to spend... You know, that's bigger. You can spend more money. You can spend more money. I mean, this, this comes will along last, with your knives. This so, will last a lifetime. Yeah. It and there's nothing wrong around. with the smaller ones. There's nothing wrong with it. It does the same thing. It's a starter but, kit. See, look, we can use it. Yeah, it's just that it does the same you kind of run out of blade. If you're using right. a knife, like you, you, you <laughs> run out of steel before the blade but is But if you have wrong. a knife like this that comes along with Little it. Little knife. It works very nicely. Chef's please. knife. Brian's knife. <laughs> it's not my knife. I borrowed a chef. So once again, we're going to wrap this up. The important thing is to remember so again, saying? sharpen only a couple times a year because you're actually removing metal. Hone. So a good, what I use is that if, if I can't get it sharp by honing, create a new edge. Create a new edge, exactly. It. If it gets to the point where you can no longer get it sharp again, like you said, from honing, now it's time to sharpen it again. I highly recommend this. Go get it. Short of that, send your knives yeah. out. You know, I have the name of a couple of really great places where they actually, believe it or not, charge you by the inch to really? sharpen your knife. Quite a few <laughs> places, give them your knives. Do them. There are even knife services for those right. folks who feel so inclined where you can give them your knives and they'll give you some back. Really? Sharp. They constantly keep them sharp. So just a couple of things to think about, but I recommend a little $9 yeah, just investment. Just get a little thing like Get a little that. $9 investment.